at, when I come home from Survivor, my girlfriend let me stay home, so I just been working on the phone. Uh, okay. Thing. Yeah, I, I don't do much other than bush hog mow, run a chainsaw, you know, that hard labor. Basically, I'm I'm on a freaking uh, in prison kind of. It's like I gotta work on the chat <laughs> gang. You know what I mean? <laughs> I enjoy it. I uh, see. I enjoy that's great so you were on survivor yeah i was on survivor uh season 39 fantastic how was that experience for you it was cool man it was the coolest thing i ever done you know i'm i'm just an old country girl i don't i had never been to la i'd never been out of the country none of that stuff you know what i mean so it was uh it was pretty interesting to, to get on a plane and fly all them hours and then end up in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you know, it was pretty cool, though. I, I really loved it. It was awesome. That's, yeah, that's really, uh, that's really interesting. I used, to, I used to love watching the show. I haven't had cable in years, but um, what, uh, what location, what destination were you guys, was uh, your season? Well, they've been going to Fiji for the past several years, so it was in Fiji. And, uh, okay. Yeah, so I think the last – five six or seven seasons have been in fiji they kind of they kind of got like um they figured out you know a restaurant that works where they could make money and and so they just keep going back, which is beautiful there like it's cool it's all get out so uh yeah it's cool i love surviving. very interesting <laughs> that's really cool sorry to sorry to be asking questions instead of you joe <laughs> sorry it, it, it's fine um actually i welcome anybody asking questions <laughs> um so i guess i'll ask elaine the first question um what was the craziest thing you ever did on survivor uh craziest thing well i crazy stuff but i i killed one of the most poisonous snakes and everybody was scared to death and I, I was like, yo, just yesterday I killed a six-foot rat snake up in my barn. It's like, yo, I, I live on a farm. It's like I kill snakes all the time. Uh, that was crazy because how everybody was reacting to it. You know what I mean? Like they were scared. And then uh, I almost got bit in the face by a shark. That was pretty freaking scary. Uh, that was nuts. Like I thought I was dead. You know what I mean? Like that was so scary. Uh, but – I, I don't know. Just everything out there is a total adventure. And so I was like a kid in a candy store. Live it up and do it all. I wanted to go spear fishing. I to do this. Uh, I, I stood in the rain for eight hours. I thought that was insane because, uh, you know, our shelter sucked and it was a downpour. Uh, and only crazy people do that. So, yeah, that was pretty nuts. <laughs> so. It was fun though, man. I had a good time. I'd go back. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess um, I'll go to Dylan. Um, so talk about your experience a little bit on kicking it. Um, what was the experience like for you playing Milton all those years? And did you develop really good connections with the cast and crew of that show? Sure. I, I think the, you know, the most surreal thing for me is that I started the show when I was 13. So I was very much a child. Um, it, it's always a little weird to kind of be put in that position when you're so young. Uh, mainly because I, I, I don't think, you know, as a, as a teenager, you quite understand the scope of what it is that you're doing. I remember the realization that I had being like, oh man, I'm on television. <laughs> wow. That's a, uh, that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so uh, my my experience, like even from getting the getting the show, it, it felt I didn't understand it fully uh, for a little while. Um, after about you know doing the show for a year, I, I kind of understood uh, exactly where we were standing. You know, I would go outside and there were people who had seen the show walking along the streets, being like, "Oh, that's Milton." So it it, it kind of opened my mind a little bit there. Um, the show. Uh, a lot of people kind of talk about working on Disney as a negative thing, and I and I don't agree with that at all. I had an amazing experience with them. Uh, they taught me a lot, and they offered me a lot of really amazing opportunities. Um, during the midst of the show, I got to work pretty much in every single department in some way, shape, or form. So it, I learned a ton about filmmaking in general uh, from the show, and 
I, it was just a, it was a really, really great experience. The, um, the rest of the cast was super nice. We were very, very lucky. Uh, a lot of other shows don't have the kind of family relationship that we had. A lot of them can be a little nippy and, uh, they can get into big fights with each other, but our cast was really solid the whole time. Um, so yeah, no, it, it was a, it was, I mean, it was a great experience that I, I really learned a lot from. I'm thankful for it. That's awesome. Dude, I'm impressed. <laughs> That's cool. And it's like, yo, you got, you got the opportunity of a lifetime to do some stuff that other people only dream of doing. You know what I mean? It's a, uh, that's pretty cool that, that you got to do that and you, you learned a lot and now you got a passion for the, the filmmaking and stuff. I think that's awesome. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I, cause I, <laughs> I had gotten into acting because of my sister. She's um, 11 years older than I am. And we, we lived in Alabama. She did community theater school plays. Um, I just wanted to be around her cause she was like my second mom. Um, and it was this little bit of a competitive edge in me that was saying, okay, well, she's done 25 plays. I need to do 26. I need to just keep doing more. Uh, and eventually it was like, all right, I got to top her. I got to get like the ultimate top on her. I got to move to New York and do something big. I got to go uh, do a film. Right. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I left for New York when I was eight years old. Um, and I ended up doing a Broadway show uh, pretty much as soon as I got to New York, I was on Broadway. Uh, another one of those things that it was about two or three years later, and I was looking over at the, my music book, and I just had this realization being like, whoa, that's, yeah. that's pretty crazy. I, <laughs> that's nuts. Not many people get to get to say that. So it's, uh, it's just so weird when you are a, <laughs> literally a child, uh, and just kind of coming into these realizations of all the really cool things that you've gotten to do. I don't know. Yeah, that's still, that dude, that's awesome. I wish, I wish I had ambition like that. You got some drive in you, eight years old, going to New York, man. That's why well, I ain't left the holler. You know what I mean? I stay right here, in the holler. So that's cool though, man. That that's that's awesome. Dude, sorry, we we was just overtaken. You go ahead and ask it. <laughs> I just get into talking and I just start gabbing. So I'll. <laughs> Uh oh, I think you're muted, buddy. Yeah. He muted himself. I muted He's myself. Okay. Sorry. I'll talk. Yeah, there you go. Somebody. Um, um, so I guess this question goes out to both of you guys. Um, what do you like doing in your spare time? Oh. Who wants I, the answer I, for you? Uh, I go for it. In country. Uh, I mean, I like to go fishing, I like four wheeling. Riding my razor, taking the boat to the lake. Uh, anything country is right up my alley. You know, I spend, I, I live on 100 acres, so it's like I spend all my time outside uh, cutting trees, mowing, bush hogging. And uh, so that just goes right in, in key with everything I love. So, uh, yeah. Drinking beer is one of my favorite, too, from time to time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I don't drink that. I see you got a Guinness shirt on. I don't drink that stuff. That Guinness. Oh, you don't drink Guinness? No, no, no. I, great country. I don't drink any of those lagers. None of that. You just give me like a Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light. Something like I keep Natty Lights in the house. Natty yeah. Lights are, are, yeah, that was like the, you know, you could get the dirty 30s and just kind of stock up on them. Yes. Listen, when I was in college, you were nickel and dime in college, right? I nickel and dime the hell out of that. If we would go buy a 30 pack of Natty, you talking about the worst hangover in the world from that stuff though. Yeah, it was, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't do anything country, man. I, I just like, you know, I, I'm a homebody. So I like to be home and do stuff outside and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, normally my, uh, normally my extra time things that I like doing is like filled with music. Um, our, both Alice and my wife and I's passion is is filmmaking. So we've always been trying to do something proactive for filmmaking, whether it be, you know, going outside and filming or anything. Uh, that has gotten more difficult as of late. So things have kind of transitioned inside the house. Um, uh, still a lot of music. I, I 
work on my computer setup quite often. So it's, it's nice. I built myself like a tiny recording studio that I can just kind of mess around with. That's um, yeah. I also started like streaming on Twitch as well, which has, has been nice to kind of keep in touch with people. Yeah. I, everybody talks, you know, I don't even know what that is. You know, like, I don't it's, know. Yeah, it's a it's a video it's a video streaming service. So you uh, you stream yourself broadcasting out to a chat room, uh, kind of similar to kind of similar to this, um, except you can't link videos with each other. You can't like do a video chat right. out of it. It's just your camera to okay. their screen, um, and it's nice because it's it's one of the only hubs for video streaming currently. Yeah. Uh, so it ends up gathering a lot of people together, but it, uh, it's primary focus on gaming, internet gaming. Well, you know, uh, I'm not big on technology. You know, I, I just got a cell phone like maybe 10 years ago and, uh, I didn't have Instagram or Twitter or none of that stuff until about September, uh, last fall. And when I went on the show, when we came home, everybody said, yo, you need to get Twitter and Instagram and this, that, and the other. And I was like, why? And it was like, cause you're going to have fans. And I was like, Come on. And they're like, no, you're going to have fans. I ended up being like one of the most popular people from my season. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so like, I mean, I don't have, I, I got a few thousand, you know, like 25,000, whatever. But I literally got that in like four months and that like blew me away. You know what I mean? So I've been learning. Sure. I've been learning how to, dude, I can't tweet for nothing. Don't, I say the stupidest tweets, you know what I mean? Like, and, and Instagram and stuff, I try to post. But uh, it's it's so much like to keep up with all of it. You know what I mean? Like I need an assistant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's that, that's pretty much like my wife is is really good at it, and I I let her handle most of my social media posting because I I'm not good at it either. I I never quite got the hang of it. No, like Twitter is not my friend. I'll I'll tweet something once in a blue moon because I just I can't come up with witty stuff to say. Like I'm a pretty sarcastic person. And sometimes my sarcasm may come off a little douchey <laughs> if I, <laughs> I tweet. Like, it may not come out right. So I worry about saying stuff because some of my jokes don't go over so well sometimes. You know what I mean? So I, sure. I try to watch what I say and do, you know. But I, I, I've i just started learning all that stuff, and I just got into it over the past year. And uh, it's fascinating that you the, the some of the stuff that you can do, you know. And uh, well, I'm a complete rookie at it, so – <laughs> okay so um so i guess the next question i have for you is what's your biggest pet peeve who wants to go first big you you can go first on this one. Oh my biggest pet peeve yeah ah uh, that's hard to say i yeah i i okay i think i have this pretty bad road rage and it's not an outward road rage it, it's very internalized i i swallow my anger a lot in the car um but my my dad was a, uh the way that he taught me was you know always like look at the other cars study the other cars make sure you know where everybody is at at all times yeah. and when I'm driving, I look at other people and I can tell that they aren't thinking the same way. And that drives me up the wall. Uh, just that they don't know where I am. It, it just, it bothers me so much. I think that's my, that, I think that would have to be my biggest pet peeve. I get, I get very that's angry better. in the car. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty impatient. And, uh, you know, if I have to go anywhere with my woman and I have to wait, like wait in the car. Well, I'll be five minutes. You know, I'll be five minutes. Uh, it turns into thirty, or like you know, waiting in line. I just have zero. Pain. So it's like people that I call it him haul. When people him haul and lollygag and you know what I mean, that stuff irks me to death. Like it drives me up a wall. You know. So mine, mine is uh, I don't have patience for other people's being slow. You know, like that drives me crazy. It's like, come on, hurry up. Sure. Let's go. So, slow driver. I get that road rage, too. That's I, Every time I'm trying to go somewhere, man, I get behind somebody that's driving two miles an hour. You know what I mean? Like, it, oh, that stuff just irks the crap out of me. I can't stand it. It really does bother me. So, that's, my, I guess, but I have no patience for nothing. <laughs> 
so, so I lived in New York for a couple of years and uh, it was right after, you know, I was born in Alabama, lived there for six or seven years, moved to Mississippi for a couple of years, moved to New York. And uh, I had switched to homeschooling when I did. And I, I specifically remember I uh, needed to get a bunch of uh, uh, doctors, medical records to send to the school. And so I was having to contact my old school and my old doctor's office uh, just to kind of get all the all the information to pass along. And the phone call took forever because of the change of pace from New York to Alabama and Mississippi. They're just like, well, hon, why don't you just hang on there for like, oh, my God, I want my medical records, please. <laughs> yeah. It takes two seconds. Yeah. See, you know what I mean, then. You know exactly what I mean. Just oh, I got you. I understand. That's crazy. All right, what's okay. the next? Um, so first off, before I get into too much, do you guys or do you guys ever use YouTube for any anything? I would. I, I want to know if any if if you guys you utilize it at all. I don't know if Dylan yeah. utilizes it or not. I didn't do a search yeah. before. Uh, uh, my my woman's young and uh, he had a YouTube page and he was, when he was younger, he was really big in the YouTube. That was his dream. He wanted to be a YouTube star. And for like five years, he kept driving me crazy about doing a YouTube page. Well, when I come home from Survivor, I was like, okay, we'll do a YouTube channel. So we kind of overtook his channel. And uh, my people call me Mo. My nickname's Mo. Don't ask me why. But, uh, and his, his nickname's Ham. It's his initials. So I, I told him, I was like, oh, we'll call it the Hail Mo Show, you know? So we did like, I don't know, like maybe four or five videos or whatever. And honestly, I just, because I'm not huge on social media stuff, I was like, yo, it's so exhausting. I Like you, you film me, dude. Like just to shoot a video and to like edit it down and, and do all, it's like insane the amount of time it takes, you know? And it's like. Oh, yeah. This, I don't know if this is for me. Like, if he would do all the editing and stuff, I'd be cool. But he, he's like, oh, let's shoot a video. And then you spend the next few hours editing it for us. And I'm like, this, I'm getting the short end of the stick here. You know what I mean? So uh, we haven't done it. Like, we really haven't made any videos uh, probably in six, eight months or more. Uh, but I, I really probably should start doing that again. Because it was fun. It's just like, man it's so time consuming, you know, and, and, uh, I can see why people literally, that's all they do is YouTube stuff. Like when they be, get big, it's cause you ain't got time to do nothing else, you know? So, uh, yeah, my hat's off to you, bro, for being able to do all that stuff and filmmaking and <laughs> do all because that stuff's crazy. But yeah, we, we have a, we have a YouTube channel. It's called the Hail Mo show, but we haven't done a video in like a year or something like that. So that's mine. Uh, so Allison and I, we, uh, we have a web series that we've been posting episodes every single Friday for four years now, five years now, uh, uh, quite a, quite a long time. We've been just pumping out episodes every, every single week. It's called Astrid Clover. Um, it kind of started out as, uh, like poking fun of hipsters. Uh, and now it's kind of turned into a millennial vlogger and her crew, uh, are, trying to just like survive the world and trying to make money, whatever means possible. Um, it, it's, you know, looking at how millennials kind of confuse believing yourself with working hard and, uh, and the struggles of not going to college and being able to find a path for yourself in today's society. Okay. It's yeah. Yeah. It's really like short episodes, five, 10 minutes. Um, but we, because we make it every week, I, I alternate the editing and we, we shoot every single week. So even uh, today, like I'm, I'm going to be having to go here pretty soon because I have to edit two episodes by tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so I tell you, that stuff takes a long time. Like, I, I mean, I ain't no professional like you. I just do a little bit, but I'm sure that what y'all do is like way, way better than I ever done. And I know it's difficult. So I feel you on that one. It's uh, it definitely depends on the episodes. I'll tell you that we have some we have some kind of crazy episodes that we film in front of a green screen, mm -hmm. and uh, and those are those are fun. They do take quite a long time just to superimpose out all the green, uh, replace them with layers upon layers of effects. But uh, most of them most of them really aren't bad. We we shoot it uh, as efficiently as possible. It's just very guerrilla. We 
run and gun with camera and microphone, just synchronize them together, cut them. Uh, today's episode of what I'm, what I'm editing is about an hour and a half long single clip that I have to cut down into 10 minutes. That one is time consuming just cause it's like, gotta go through and just find all the funny points. Yeah. Well, see, when I when I shoot with the youngin, like I tell him all the time, I was like, "Yo, you're terrible." He has there's so much content that you literally have to cut. It's like, bro, just keep it. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I just I was like, "Yo, this is way too much for me. I'm I'm not like uh, head over into it like you are." So I, it's like I need to take a break from this. But it was sure. Fun, you know what I mean? It was fun to put stuff out there, but uh, it's not like. I think he's got like 800 followers. It's not like, you know what I mean? Like it's nothing, major. Mm-hmm. but it, it, was, uh, yeah. it was interesting to actually get into that and see some of the stuff that you got to do to actually make videos. And it's crazy nuts. So, Absolutely. <laughs> that's what I'm asking is, is, is it possible? I don't know if you guys say specifically if you do endorsements or not for channels, but I was wondering if one of you guys would be willing to, mention me in your series at some point or like follow me as a subscriber on my youtube channel or something of that nature i will definitely subscribe to your youtube channel um since our since our show is not like uh like our show is fiction we don't usually do like endorsements or uh shout outs of any kind uh but i will definitely subscribe to you yeah okay. uh, bro i guess i posted anything on youtube in like a year so it's like uh I, I don't and like I said, I only got like eight hundred followers. I don't even know if it'd be worth it. You know, you probably got three people that watch it, you know what I mean? So it's like uh I mean, but hey, if I remember, you know what I mean, I'll I'll get on there and, and look you up. You know, I don't get on YouTube very much anymore. But uh I wouldn't care to subscribe to your channel. You know what I mean, to to see what, what you got going on from time to time. That'd be cool. Yeah. So um I don't know how long Dylan has, but how long, whatever time you have, Elaine, you can stay on for. We can keep this going for as long as is necessary for you guys. Yeah, well, just when the woman gets home and she starts making me pack in groceries, and then I got to go in there and, and make some steak is when I got to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I should get hopping off in about five minutes. Okay, so we have about five minutes left. Okay, so I'll just ask one last question, I guess. Um, so, what is one message you would give to your fans? Oh, that's a good one. Um, let's see. Well, I'll go first. Uh, you know, go for it. There, there, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now that's pretty heavy and pretty serious. And I think that people should always remember just to fall back on basic principles of being kind to one another and treating people how you want to be treated. Uh, I try to do that with everybody. You know, I, I'm a pretty friendly person. You know, any of my fans reach out to me, I holler, I message back. Uh, but I think kindness goes a long way, and I, I think the world needs more of it. And uh, like I said, like, uh, you can't go wrong, you know what I mean? Like, you just can't go wrong with just being kind and uh, treating people how you want to be treated. So that that's my message to my fans. I always tell all my fans that kindness goes a long ways, treat people how you want to be treated. And I say that on my cameos when I'm done with my cameos all the whole night. So that's kind of like something I stand behind firmly because I, I really do believe that, that that's what the world needs is, is remember we're all humans. We're all one people. You know what I'm saying? So that's my thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think for, uh, for me, the biggest thing to all, all of the fans out there is that uh, like, thank you. <laughs> like I wouldn't be here where I am today without their support. Um, and that, that's something that I, uh, also in cameos, you know, I, I try and go above and beyond and make fun, fun videos for them. Like ours was a karate show. So I always like stick headbands on and do really, really bad karate in like every single cameo, just because it's like, I, I don't know. I want to show that appreciation to them. Yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, people though, they want to become actors. Um, and I can, I can kind of give advice to that is to say like, Ultimately, as long as you were having fun, like follow your dreams, you know, uh, I started with community theater and it's a great foundation uh, for everybody. It really kind of gets you into it, lets you 
feel like the the passion for the art and i always suggest hey do some local theater grab you some headshots post online on like casting sites uh and as long as you're enjoying it then you can't really go wrong with it so um yeah no that's uh, i I'm, I'm very appreciative of all the all the people who have supported me yeah. over the years Second okay. so i will say i'll tell you right now thank you guys for coming on to this, to this um meeting um last minute and um i will be sure if i put it on youtube to try to tag your guys's um channels or whatever channel you have in there so your subscribers can see it as well hey what well, i, I listen fantastic hey, i appreciate you reaching out to me man like uh i'm sorry i didn't see your messages on instagram uh sometimes it takes me a minute to to get through you know stuff and but i'm glad you reached out to me and i was able to to holler at you you know and i got can to you meet, got dylan to can you message me can you message me what the name of your channel is okay so I have it. sure absolutely yeah that, that sounds good I'll, I'll do that when we uh get off here on instagram yeah that sounds that, that sounds great Thank you guys again for taking the time to do this interview with me. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. <laughs> and it was very nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. You too. I'll sit, talk I, to you guys later. Bye-bye. I, I thought it was fun. Oh, yeah, it was. I did. It, it's, it's pretty fun. I'm trying to get more sus subscribers because I only have like 44 subscribers on YouTube. So I'm That's trying okay. to get up to 100 <laughs> subscribers. You know. People, people will start watching. Just keep the faith and, and – uh, just keep chasing your dream, bro. Yep. Thank you so much.